Welcome back everybody, this is Tony K with Urban Girl Scout Media and this is Living the Dream Episode 2. If you guys didn't have a chance to check out Episode 1, just a quick recap, I gave you my five rules for life, my one motto. Uh, we did a crack a pack, we talked about Magic the Gathering's War of the Spark and I gave you a little bit of a corny uh, essay at the end there. Here today, we're going to do a little bit different speed, um, we'll have a crack a pack as, of course. Um, but we're going to talk about The Office, probably my favorite TV show. Uh, we are going to relaunch the Urban Girl Scout Media Fantasy Epic Tale uh, here today. We'll catch up with our good buddy Gollum. And, well, who knows what else we're going to do today. Sit back, relax. This is Living the Dream with Tony K, Episode 2. Let's run it! Welcome, 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 guys. Episode 2, here we go. So, I wanted to start today with uh, something that's come up over the last few weeks, and I thought it would be just a great way to start this episode off. I want to talk about the internet. Now, everybody's using the internet for all sorts of different uses. Uh, let's, let's keep it real. We use it to pay bills, we use it to look up information, we, look it to, we use it to look up pornog, right? I don't even care what kind of pornog you're looking up but you use it to look it up. More power to you, it allows you to just, information's at your fingertips, the world is smaller than it's ever been. Unfortunately, there is one issue I do have with the internet, and that is backlash and outcry over things that necessarily aren't necessary. Um, that's really stupid to say, right? Necessarily aren't necessary. That's how stupid this is. So I have three examples, three examples, that I want to talk about here to get us started where the internet basically showed me its dumb side. First is Game of Thrones. Now I will be the first to admit this last season was not great. <clears throat> this last season was in fact terrible. However, after episode 3, The Long Night, where it took literally 8 years of buildup, spoiler alerts ahead, 8 years of buildup and it took one episode, one episode, not a full 90 minutes. I'm tired of this nonsense of, well, each episode is going to be 90 minutes and it's going to be a mini movie. Bullshit. One episode it took to kill the Night King and his army. Now, I'm not upset that Arya was the one who did it. Yeah, how stark. But one episode, eight years of build up, one episode, seven years of build up, whatever you want to call it, one episode. The point is, as soon as I got to that episode and I was done with it, I realized this season's not going to be great. This is actually going to be a bad season because of the buildup. There was nothing they could do, in my opinion, to justify that letdown. So from that point out, I gave up. I watched the show, but I had very low expectations. Like I put on my Facebook page, I was just happy to be at the end. In comes the internet. I do enjoy discussing my hobbies, uh, TV shows and movies that I enjoy watching. I like discussing on the internet. You could not find a safe place, and I hate when people talk about a safe place on the internet, guys. You couldn't find a safe place to say, I didn't mind that episode or that season without getting ripped to shreds. Ripped to shreds. Opinions are supposed to be different and unique to the person, that's great. But insulting another person on their opinion takes the fun out of the conversation. Just because um, the series didn't go the way we want doesn't mean we have to take on each other. But then the internet, <coughs> excuse me, then the internet did something that I thought was even worse. And that was they signed a petition to have HBO redo the last season. 
I want to say that again. They signed, they got a petition to be signed, I think it's close to a million people signed it, for HBO to redo the last season. All the factors involved as to why the last season turned out it did, you really want to give them another chance. Also, if this is the way we're going to get shit done is by having a petition signed, let's do something that matters, okay? Let's fight Big Pharma and let's bring these drug costs down. Let's sign a petition. Anyways, um, hashtag bring it down. That's going to be started here, guys. Hashtag bring it down. Um, but anyways, the internet was so mad over Game of Thrones, the internet was so mad over, um, the last episode that there was that backlash. They started the petition. Not a lot of enjoyment came at all. And I'm going to be honest, guys, the show is going to age well. The show is going to age incredibly well. We have to be able to go back and enjoy the first six seasons. We cannot, season seven wasn't that bad. Let's just keep it real. Season eight sucked. Season seven was not that bad in hindsight. Season 8 sucked. Um, we cannot, we can't attack one another though over those different opinions. So Game of Thrones was definitely an issue for me. Um, just in the internet's response, the fact that we wanted HBO who was already losing um, certain cast members or the writers or the directors. They are losing people for different reasons, for different contracts. Here, there, the other thing going there, going there, who knows where. But they were losing them. And we wanted them to redo it. Doesn't work like that, guys. Also, somebody really smart um, told me something recently. Remember when Empire Strikes Back came out and how awful everybody thought the ending was? Now, this was before I was born. But think back to that and keep that in mind of what people thought years ago. Um, now we look back and it's a great movie. Welcome to life. You don't always get the ending you want, and I think that's actually what Game of Thrones was all about, was life. Um, and the internet just could not handle it. The trolls could not handle it. The buttheads could not handle it. The nerf herders could not handle it. The goat humpers could not handle it. That's a new term we're going to use here, goat humpers. They could not handle it. So, Game of Thrones, the internet, that... Alright, so my next issue was around... Sonic. We have this movie coming out, Sonic the Hedgehog. The trailer just came out. I think we got about 45 seconds, give or take, of screen time with him on it. Um, the, the absolute backlash and outcry towards this has been absurd, guys. It has been absolutely insane. First off, you cannot tell me, I'm my mama, you cannot tell me that 45 seconds is enough time to be able to tell the whole aspect. A trailer is meant to give you a tease. Now you are allowed to dislike it, absolutely. And I will be 100% uh, honest. Did he look corny in the first make? Absolutely looked corny 100%. This is a video game character from the early to mid 90s, icon of the Sega Genesis and Sega company. Um, he is to Sega what Mario is to Nintendo. And I'm sorry, but did you see the Mario live-action movie? It was corny. That's what these movies are supposed to be. They're supposed to be corny. If we are going to dissect a movie before it comes out based on 45 seconds of how Sonic looks, regardless of if he looked perfect or whatever, we are setting that movie up to be a failure. Um, so I hope that we all give it a chance because, honestly, Sonic was was just a corny little cartoon at one point. Think about it. Go back and find the cartoon. Go back and find the Mario Brothers live action movie, the Mario Brothers cartoon, and the Sonic cartoon. Those were corny. They were corny. All right, last thing here is the dude from Twilight, Robert Pattinson, Patterson, whatever the, whatever the fuck his name is. Also, uh, side note, we're past this. I like to curse. I don't care. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, so, dude announced as Batman. Internet was unhappy about that. Within moments of the possibility of him being announced as Batman, we were talking about Twilight, We were talking, which I know that's what I brought up, but that's what he's known for, right? Um, and how that's, there's no way he can translate that over and all this. So, 
I gotta take just a minute here. I gotta take just just a moment and point something out for everybody. Heath Ledger was not anticipated to be a great Joker. Daniel Craig was not anticipated to be a great James Bond. And there was a time where if you do just a little bit of research, just, just a bit, just a bit, just check the Googles, check the Googles. If you got Internet Explorer, Firefox, Mozilla, whatever, she could probably find on MS-DOS. Michael Keaton, the dude who played Mr. Mom, duplicity. He was Batman, and there was all this outrage. Tell me he was a bad Batman. Tell me right now that he was a bad Batman, and then tell me who was a better option. I mean, that dude was Batman for a generation. So, we have to give these people a chance. I'm not going to bring up Ben Affleck. That's another popular one on the internet that people have talked about. I'm kind of in between on, on Ben Affleck as Batman. He didn't do bad, um, but I also have different standards, I think, for my actors than other people do. Um, I'm a little more realistic. Shocked. Anyways, so my point here is we haven't, they haven't even like started making the movie and we're already ripping them. We did the same thing to these other guys. Um, and those examples I brought up were really great examples of there was no support and they turned out to hit it out of the park. Now for every great story like that, there is the, um, what was it, John Carter, that terrible Disney movie that they hyped up. That was a flop, okay? Um, Valerian Steel, if you haven't seen it, you don't need to. But there are times where those movies are going to be hyped up and they're going to be flops. It happens. My point is you should give this guy a chance because this is an individual actor. Now, I will admit this before I go any further. And i got to get serious here for a minute. Jared Leto was trash as the Joker. I mean, oh my god. You suck, dude. I'm sorry. Like, normally I wouldn't attack someone like that, but your performance of the Joker was not good. So you don't suck, but your performance was awful. Let me just, let me just correct myself. No, you suck, Jared Leto. Lo, 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 lo. Um, I can't even say your name right. That's, like, normally when I don't like somebody, I just don't say their name right. So, congratulations, Jared. You made the list. Fired up today. Um... But anyways, where was I? I don't even know. Anyways, so this is good TV right here, good web series. But what I'm getting at is, I'm not saying that, that Robbie, hit me up, man. I'm supporting you right now, so you better hit me up. Because, man, I, I'm i going to throw a bone your way. I know you need the help right now in your career more than ever. From, from us at the Girl Scouts, here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't think he's going to be bad. I really don't. Um, I, you know, I could look back in a year and we could do... Um, where Tony was wrong on this and, and look back and say, absolutely, yeah, you were wrong, Tony. I actually don't think he's going to be that bad in hindsight. Um, give him a chance, let the movie get out there. The reason that this is so passionate of a topic for me is because think about the internet and what I've talked about in these three examples. Um, think about it like this. You work at a job, and you've done a few projects where uh, you, you have to... Um, be the third or second in command on the project. Basically, you're not the number one person, okay? Sports team as well, you can even do that. Then you get your shot. You get your shot to be the number one, okay? You get it on a different project, and all these people only judge you based on the fact that you've never been, been a number one before. Not only that, but they gossip and then find anything they can to not believe in you and give you a fair shot. That is kind of what the internet does at times. Now listen, I'm not trying to change anybody's opinion about this because your opinion should be unique to you and more power to you. But keep your opinions open. I definitely was not stoked when I heard about uh, Ben Affleck and I'm still on the fence about it here today. Um, Christian Bale, I was like, nah, is he going to do good? I, I don't know what to expect. He might be my favorite Batman. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that's something I've, I've thought about doing a discussion on. Uh, like, him and Michael Keaton are up there for me. But the fact of the matter is, these actors, you know, they're good at what they do, um, and you'd want the same chance. So, it's fun. 
watching everybody on the internet freak out over this. I know that it gives me content to talk about here. Um, but honestly, guys, don't be nerf herders. Um, don't be goat humpers. Let's just let's just give this guy a chance. And then listen, if the movie comes back and it's awful, I want people to bring it up that I said I think he's going to do okay. I want to be called out on it. Anyways, let's uh, let's transition into something a little bit a little bit friendlier. How about this? Um, one of my favorite shows ever is The Office. Just knock something over. Uh, one of my favorite shows ever is The Office. So this first featured clip here today, um, I'm going to help settle one of the biggest debates on the internet. Find an Office fan group. And I found a few of them because I, I did a little research on this. Um, find an office, find the office fan groups um, and ask yourself a question. Who's the worst character on the office? Okay, so this guy's never given a name. We're just gonna call him the goat humper. This guy literally looks like he goes onto farms here in the Midwest and humps goats. Uh, make sure that distinction is very clear and not any other way. But back to the episode. This is the guy who uh, initiates the yelling and does eventually throw something at Michael Scott. Even the girls looking at him, and she she looks like she adores him and that she just loves what he's doing. And who? interrupts an Elton John song, even if it is, um, you have won a tiny, tiny Dundee. Like, who actually has the audacity, the audacity, the unmitigated gall, Stephen A. Smith mode, um, but of course there is this guy who, why, where does he get off with the, uh, your mom's house comment? I don't get it, and again, you see the guy who looks like he goes to farms and does goat humping to the side, looking as smart as he did in the previous image. This guy literally made a your mom joke. How old is this guy? I mean, honestly and truly, like, if and there, there are real people like this, so that's what's crazy, is that this is not just some fictional character. Like, there are real human beings like this. Finally, we got the manager who... He enforces the uh, ban hammer on Pam, but again, our two contestants from uh, who is the worst character on The Office, they, I, I don't believe they found any repercussions, so, uh, and then the little um, that he does at the end, where he says that she is not welcomed at this restaurant chain again. Dude, you work at a Chili's. Oh, man. So there you go, this guys. This dude. That is my take on who is the worst characters on The Office. It's really a three-way tie, but they all fit into the same episode. Now, as you can see, I've got my Dunder Mifflin shirt on. I've got my Dundee Award. Don't go in there after me. Kind of feel like I'm a qualified expert. I've been through the series several times. Um, down the road, I'll probably do a top five episode. But this was actually a really good topic to cover here because these guys have gotten overlooked. Let's not pretend for one moment that there are characters worse than these three in their own special way uh, throughout the series. Um, absolutely stand by it. Absolutely think that the, the two guys look like they go to farms and they just hump the shit out of goats. I believe that the Midwest is under a crisis and... Well, it's time to lock up your farm animals because after the goats, you got the sheep. After the sheep, you got the cows. After the cows, if it's not the horses, well, they're going to start finding an animal that they can get at. And really, if they go after the horses, I mean, they're going to get attacked. So by that point, they're going to want something a little bit easier. The sloth is the target. That is the end target for people like this. They're going to go after them. I'm telling you right now, just heed my warning. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Worst characters on The Office, right? Uh, they'll do that to you. They'll get you fired up. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And what do you guys think? Do you think that uh, there's a character worse? Do you think there's characters that uh, deserve to be discussed more? Maybe we maybe we miss somebody. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite episodes. Spoiler alert! Um, so, I don't know. I've seen this uh, series a few times. And this was definitely the, the group that I thought, man, they are just a horrible batch of individuals. So, that's my take on the worst characters on The Office. Uh, let's go ahead and transition now to this week's Crack Pack. Alright guys, let's do another Crack-A-Pack, and again, we're going to go back to Battle Bond. This was one of my favorite summer sets. Uh, I wanted to try and do a different angle so you can see some of the things that were kind of behind me and whatnot, and I'll try and open this at kind of a higher up angle so you can see what I've got. Just found out that the rares are actually towards the front of these packs, so I'm going to try and go backwards and see if we can do it that way, and just see what we get, and if there's anything worth pointing out, I'll definitely point it. Uh, Good comment, Fertile Ground. Make sure that if you are playing decks you can get this in there, at least consider it. Hate it when people look over those kinds of cards where you enchant the land and it doubles it up. Why not just go for it if you're going to play some enchantments anyways? Let's see what we got. We're coming up in our rare. So, uncommoned, we've got Morbid Curiosity, Calling Dias. Here we go. So we've got Oaken Eye of Chaos. Uh, I don't remember most of these. Oh, we actually got two. We got the one that it partners with, the Zipter's Eye of Wisdom. So you get two of them. It's the partner legendaries. It's one of the themes of the Battle Bond set. Let's go ahead and just put them up right there so you can see exactly what we're looking at. Uh, so let's read the red one. These are both four colorless. Uh, the Eye of Chaos is red. The Eye of Wisdom is blue. Uh, total converted mana cost for each one is five and it says that it partners one the other when you cast it it can enter the battlefield target player may put uh, the other card from their hand or into their hand from their library and then shuffle at the beginning of your combat turn flip a coin until you lose a flip whenever a player wins a coin flip double the power and toughness of Okun Eye of Chaos and then on the Eye of Wisdom again partner at the beginning of your combat, flip uh, on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever a player wins a coin flip, draw a card. So you could essentially double some power and toughness and draw some cards just based on those coin flips. If you remember, when Battle Bond came out, there was a little bit of a spike in uh, cards that were related to coin flips. Stitch and Time was one. <clears throat> just things like that. Coin flip cards are always going to be really popular in Magic. Um, Chaos Orb is really the one that I think we we overlooked the most. That was the one that kind of started this fascination, in my opinion, of the extra outside of just the cards. You know, Chaos Orb, you flip it up and whatever it lands on. Remember the original, uh, one of the original big time stories around this was the person who confettied it. Um, so that's kind of cool. As far as it goes with coin flipping, though, that's always one of my favorite things to look into. Um, coin flipping ways to instantly win or lose the game. Those are really fun, really unique abilities. I think if you're going to play Magic, at least do yourself a favor and look into. Um, this one specifically, you know, for each coin flip you win, you could double uh, the power and also draw a card for each time. That's pretty good. There's plenty of cards that allow you the opportunity to go all sorts of crazy with uh, for each flip. Flip each single flip twice so that you can choose, you know, things like that. Um, and just kind of static and triggered abilities off those coin flips. So definitely look into that. I think coin flipping is actually one of the few things in Magic that doesn't get enough attention from all sorts of players, including myself. I made a deck a few years ago that had that coin flip ability, and it, it wasn't bad, but certainly cards like this will help. Red and blue are the best coin flip colors, in my opinion. So I went on a bit of a rant there, but that was a good pack. I really like it. I really like that Battle Bond gave me both the Eye of Wisdom and the Eye of Chaos. I can partner both of them together. Good stuff. Great pack for this edition of Cracker Pack.
All right, so let's do us a little game review, and we're going to go back to the Game Boy Advance today and go to a game that, uh, when I first heard about, I had high hopes. I'm talking about this little gem right here. I know you can't see it from all the way, so I'll put some pictures up. I'm talking about The Ripping Friends. Uh, it's called The Ripping Friends, The World's Most Manly Men. A couple things here before we get into this game. First, uh, this is from the same studio that brought us Ren and Stimpy. This is a game that is based off of a cartoon show that's actually pretty popular in Canada um, and was shown here, I believe, on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network a bit. Uh, and it's focused around four guys. I have their names written down here because I'm terrible with names. Rip, Chuck, Slab, and Crag. Basically, we just follow them around. They're goofs. Uh, we're just going to do all kinds of fun stuff, right? So that's the premise of the show. That's what the game had to build off of. Let's get into the game itself. It was released in 2002 by THQ. Um, they had some really good games along the way. I wasn't sure what to expect going into this. Let me give you guys just a, full, a few quick bullets on this game. First is, you do get to choose from the original, from the four characters that I listed. And one more time, it's Rip, Chuck, Chunk, sorry, Slab, and Crag. There you go, someone can get me in the comments on that. Um, so you have those four. I believe it's Crag is the one that I have the notes on here that his special ability or whatever his side ability is that makes each one of them unique from one another is supposed to be the one that helps you the most throughout the game. I didn't find this out until I just got too tired of playing the game itself. So the levels um, are pretty unique. The things I want to point out first off is the view. Uh, you do have kind of a looking down view. Uh, the problem is that when you go behind buildings or go around certain areas, that view does become obnoxious. So that's an issue for me. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Next is the controls. Listen, the Game Boy Advance is pretty basic as it is. I felt like they did a decent job keeping it basic. The problem is that when you get into the um, combat, it was a little tough at times because you'd have to line up just right with your enemy. Um, you know, if, if they're moving this way, you have to be just with them. You have to tee them up perfectly if you're going to do some of those moves. It makes it hard. Uh, the good thing is that all of the bad guys or bosses on this um, at the end of each level pretty much follow a routine. So it's not like you can't uh, figure it out and take advantage of it. It's just you have to evolve in this game quickly um, in order to learn those moves if you're going to get ahead. As far as it goes with the music, so like everybody makes the same grunting noise which actually got pretty annoying pretty quickly and then the other thing is there's only like two or three different background musics um, and they're just on like a 10 or 15 second loop or track I didn't really care for that, it was actually really annoying so those are the, the big things technical wise I want to point out my biggest issue though is that this was as bland of a game as possible um, I'm going to give it one out of five stars so I'm just going to go ahead and jump to that right now and just tell you one out of five stars on The Ripping Friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what kept this game so low is it comes from the same studio that brought us Ren and Stimpy. THQ made really good games around this time period in 2002, but there's nothing fun about this game. There's nothing unique. It's just your basic black and white, uh, you're going to start here, you're going to get here kind of game in my opinion. Uh, it, you know, it's pretty similar to a lot of other games at the time. I don't think it's as bad as, like, you'll see those Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen or um, That's So Raven games. Like, this is just a step above those, but that's just because of my personal taste. I could see a lot of people saying it's right below there. So, if you're looking to play Game Boy Advance games, this is probably not the best game to start with. It is fun if you're okay with the idea of having to use the passwords to skip to the different levels. Um, because that's what I ended up doing. It just becomes too tedious to keep starting over, and I didn't find the time to really sit down and put you know a straight hour into this game, and it, it's also a tough game to do that with. So, like I said, one out of five stars, uh, or one out of five overall, or one out of five thumbs up, I don't care, however you want to look at it, I'm basically giving it a one out of five. Um, I really wish there was something that just kind of made the game a little bit more goofy and a little bit more unique in what it does, but it just wasn't there. So, again, Ripping Friends, same people as Spumco, I believe, is who brought us Ren and Stimpy, and the cartoon itself isn't bad, so if you have a chance, get on YouTube and find it. I don't know if it still airs. That's actually how I had to find it uh, to prepare for this. So, yeah, Ripping Friends, one out of five. 
this thing on? How do you tell it's recording? Alright guys, welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, sitting outside here and just kind of enjoying the nature. Uh, probably should have done this last episode if I was going to talk about um, being outside more. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, got a good rant in about the internet. Got a good rant in about The Office. Uh, talked about a video game that I think a lot of you probably haven't heard of. Um, the Ripping Friends. And then we brought back Gollum for uh, the UGSM Epic Tale. This has really been fun to this point. And the next couple of episodes we have some skits coming up. Uh, possibly, possibly, don't quote me original musical performance but no um i really hope you guys enjoyed it tell me what you guys think this is only the second episode still learning a lot still doing a lot of things um and i appreciate all the feedback and everything a couple things i wanted to throw out there before we end this episode i think uh first off let's talk about magic war of the spark uh looks to be a pretty darn good set um Planeswalkers have been one of my favorite card types for a long time, and this set really delivered. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Ashiok and Dovin, they're going to lock it down in the standard. It's the, the lockdown couple. Um, so that was pretty cool. We've seen a lot of uh, spoilers to this point for Modern Horizons. Um, people are joking that it's Commander Horizons or, you know, whatever it is. Um a little expensive for the box, the prices have gone up, and to be completely fair, I think that um, the set's good, but it's going to go into the same issue that other master sets have had, and that is people got to look at it, orders were canceled for pre-order, people are having to pay more, um, and you can find a lot of great information about this print-to-demand issue. Um I think that's going to be a big deal for for these summer sets. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, you know, let's hope that uh, the rest of the spoilers as they come out just knock it out of the park. The other thing I wanted to talk about, NBA Finals. So, as of this video, uh, I waited until the day of to make this ending clip because I wanted to get the uh, game one in there. So, we got the Raptors and we got the Warriors. Uh, a couple quick things. First off, Toronto, congratulations. Nation of Canada, congratulations. First NBA Finals game played outside the United States. That's amazing. Um, Kawhi Leonard played great. Pascal Siakam played great. And when I say Kawhi Leonard played great, he didn't have statistically the greatest game. But he did produce enough to get his team a W. So, it's all about that W. Um, for Golden State, I'm not panicked. I still think they win the championship. I believe that was my original pick. I believe I picked Milwaukee. I'm going to have to go back and watch. I believe I picked Milwaukee to make the finals. Um, I still think Golden State will pick up the victories needed to take home the championship, even without Kevin Durant. I think that they can do it. They just have to get um, Boogie Cousins back in. Andre Iguodala isn't healthy. And they have to have another option. It can't be the Splash Brothers plus Dre. Um, have to have that other option. So, you know, your Jordan Bells or your um, Jarebkos, whoever it is going to be, they have to play great. On the other side of that, though, Toronto's got a one-game lead. They're lengthy. They play great defense. Um, they're not banged up right now. And they have a lot of experience. Not finals experience, but they have a lot of mature players who are going to be able to take on this challenge. So I wouldn't be surprised at this point if Toronto won this series. Um, when the series started, I was picking uh, Golden State in six. I still stand with that. Wouldn't be surprised, though, if Toronto got it done. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that was really just noteworthy from the past few weeks? Um, working on some new video game stuff for for our next few episodes. There's a Crash Bandicoot game on Game Boy Advance called The Big Adventure, and absolutely love and playing that. I'm pretty sure that's what our next game review is going to be. Um, I've also been going back to the old SmackDown games, so like the original SmackDown, um, because those are the real good wrestling games. So 
you know, the, the early 2000, late 90s wrestling games was really where it just took off. So um, I've really been enjoying the stunners, the rock bottoms. Rob Van Dam was one of those uh, ECW wrestlers I truly love. So just really good stuff. Um, that's about it. About it. <sighs> it's gorgeous outside. We've had uh, Central Illinois has gotten beaten down by storms. Hopefully you guys are uh, safe. Hopefully you guys are um, able to stay safe during those storms because it's scary. It's, it's definitely scary. A lot of tornadoes here in the past couple of weeks. Um, just a, a weird time of year. So hopefully it cools off. Outside of that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, we will talk about a few things in the coming episodes. Expect to hear us talk about the Cubs. Got to talk about sports. Um, I'm working on a skit for Game of Thrones. What do you think, Mars? Talking to the dog. But no, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um... Yeah, I, I, I wish I had more to say. Just kind of happy to be done with this second episode. Sort of forgot to get some of this together before the end. Ooh, so, but you guys enjoy. Have a great day. And uh, if you like what you're watching, like the video, share, comment. Do something to help me out, please. Don't want to work forever. Um, you can't, can't save yourself to wealth, can you? But no, my name's Tony. This is Living the Dream. Urban Girl Scout Media, signing off. See you next time.